Hold up, hold up. Blue eyes in the top 32. That is what I am talking about. That is the way. Show me the way. Blue eyes, white dragon is here. Are they top tier? Turn one cutscene. Come forth, Blue Eyes White Dragon. I end my turn. What the? Sun, Blue Eyes, and End. We have one back row card. If we were to legally cheat, legal cheating using the website, this is allowed. Konami does frown upon this. You will know that that back row is most likely going to be a karma cut. Make sure you're dual assisting. Blue eye, blue eye spell books. What the? Karma cut is the way. So how does it read like a karma cut? If it reads like a karma cut, it will tell you that you definitely are not playing against a book of moon. That's 100%. You know, it will not be book of moon. You know, it will not be Rageki break. You know that it will not be Hollow Life Barrier. That is definitive. And if they had an effect monster on the fields, then you could also eliminate Fiendish Chain. That is how you legally cheat. Get cheating. What is the back row? It is a Raigeki break. So if we were to make a read on Raigeki break, how we would make the read is we would definitively know that it is not Karma Cut, not Divine Wrath. It could be a Book of Moon. It could be a Raigeki. You know, it's definitively not this, not this, not that, not this. It could be that, and it could not be Fiendish Chain. So you know that it's one of these three. With Book of Moon being the most likely. This is not a maybe. This is a definitive guide on knowing what that back row card could be. Lethal damage. Resonator Thunder Dragons. How popular is this? What is going on? How could I lose? This is unacceptable. Thundernators. We are in the grand finals of the Meta Weekly every single week, bro. The final tournament of Zexel. Who will crown themselves as the victor? The best player, the final best deck, final best player of Zexel. You know the deal. Go to discord.gg slash meta. Connect your Discord and Twitch for the largest, most active Discord for events, discussions, and help. We're discussing Arc 5. We're discussing new ban lists. We're discussing the new combos, new ways to break the game. Come join us at Duel Links Meta. Let's go. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Let's go. Focus. Jet Ski going first. They are known for being top tier. A tier one deck by going first. That is how Onimates play. Now, Onimates do not set three with no monster summon. That is not a top tier play. It is not Jet Ski's fault. He did brick. So, Cam Neal, are you going to take advantage? You are also top tier tier one. Can you finish this up? We got on of play. We didn't even activate the on of play from Jet Ski, which could have returned any on to grab an on from the deck. Doodoo -doo draw, discard a doodoo, -doo, draw two. With True Nade banned, we don't have to worry about True Nading the back row for the win. This will very likely make it to at least turn three, hopefully. Gaga sister, time to play. Will this be the final time we play with our sister as we grab the Gaga Bolt? Bolt, pop a card in the field. Zuba Code special summon alongside the sister before we activate the bolt. Come on in, my sister. Coat on my sister. Book of Moon gonna flip down a Gaga on the fields. Flipping down the coats. Taking the coat off the sister, we could still activate the Gaga bolts. We're bolting. 
Bolt the middle. Will he flip up the middle? Is it chainable? Is it another Book of Moon? Possibly. It's a Lance. Lance is going to reduce the sister to zero attack, making her unaffected by spell and traps. Now, what's surprising to me is that Onomats have dropped Gaga Wind for the most part. If I look at the tier list and look at Onomats, Gaga Wind is down to 67% of players are not playing Gaga Wind. That's crazy. No Gaga Wind follow-up anymore. Onomana play was not the newly drawn card, if I'm not mistaken. You can pay attention to the cards in their hand, how they draw them. Not activating Onomana play again. Going in onto the set monster, are we going to Book of Moon, Kanadia? How do you know what to expect in the back row of a deck? Well, very easily we can go to the dual assist mode and type in Onomats. Onomat back row is going to look like that. Hey, that's the most used back row right there, Book of Moon. Hey, that's the second most used. Lance, make me unaffected by the Book of Moon. The 100 defense of the Gaga Ko is why he was able to lance his own monster, reducing him by 800 and still going through with the attack. Nice. On, I'm on a play. Return a card in the hand. Back in the deck. Goodbye, doo-doo draw. It's time for Gaga Head. Gaga Head could tribute summon over the sister, summoning the sister and the coat back onto the fields. What are we doing? Are we stopping the Gaga Head? Fiendish Chain. Negates. Breakthrough Skill. What is a good back row card that would have stopped? And the most popular good back rows would have been... Fiend of Shane. Fiend of Shane would have been the way. No chain. Gaga's sister changing the level of the coat to level six and herself. We're going to chain Book of Moon. Get flipping. I'm going to chain Forbidden Lance to make myself unaffected by your Book of Moon. No Book of Moon for you. Was this a Book Lance duel? Jeez. Double Book, double Lance. One Book, one Lance. Holy moly, Book and Lance all over the place. M7 Exceed, Detached Material, return the Onomat back to the hand, opening up the field, showing you exactly why Onomat is a top tier. Tier 1 deck, hopefully for the last time and never again. Can we all agree on that? Or are you an Onomat lover? Do you love your sister? Do you want Onomat to be top tier forever? Fool! Do better if I want to feel the flow like my Gotta dad. feel the flow like my dad. Who's his dad? We are drawing. Turn one going to Cam. We are tier one because when we go turn one, we make a turn one disruptive play with a nearly guaranteed follow up lethal plus removal plus draw one play. It is absolutely insane. Unfortunately, Jetski was not able to take advantage of going first in game one, so this may already be over. Zubaba Coat. Gaga's sister changed the level of the coat and herself to six, so we can make a rank six Photon Strike Bouncer. Bouncer get bounds in. This will negate any monster effect from the opponent, but against a Gaga sister, it really isn't that great. They summon Sister, you negate the Sister, but then the Sister could still activate its second effect to change levels. So you just negate the search with the Gaga Bolt. It's not that big of a deal. Due to draw, discarding a glove, draw two, Book of Moon flipping down the Bouncer so it cannot negate our Sister. On, I'm on a play, feeling the flow. Return the due to draw, grab our Sister. Time to play with our sister. Will the back row disrupt the sister? Fiendish Chain, Book of Moon. Going to search for a Gaga Wind. We just talked about how 67% of Gaga players do not play Gaga Wind, yet he's playing it. I think it will help him. And I, it's probably why Cam Neal did not flip up a Book of Moon right now. That is the most likely card to be in his back row. Special summoning the Zuba Coat. Now he's going to Book of Moon. So what you do is with the toggle on, you wait to see what they search. And if he searched for a bolt, 
I'm thinking he would have booked the sister, but he saw the wind, so he knew the book was not going to be as good. Saved the book for the coat. Gaga wind special summoning a monster alongside the sister. Onomatopoeia is here. Sister and the Onomatopoeia can become level six together. And then rank six succeed. It is all up to that back row card. If I was Jet Ski, I would be hoping that that back row card is just a forbidden lance. I would be hoping. I am hoping. This is the most likely back row. Book of Moon, Lance. If it is a Lance, then he is free. He is free to feel the flow. No way. What the heck is that? That is semi-limited Rhino Bus. That means he's not playing Gaga Head. I cannot believe it. A surprise appearance from Rhino Bus. Rhino Bus was emergency limited because of Onomats being a tier zero deck with the Rhino Bus. Oh, we do have Forbidden Lance. In the damage step, we're going to reduce the bus down to 1,800 attack, so it's not going to be big enough to take out the Bouncer. Oof. Oh, my. No way. The Bouncer will now be able to negate the Rhino Bus. The Rhino Bus has the effect to quick play detach material. Destroy your opponent's monster with the highest defense. What is the play? Onomatopoeia is here. It could summon an Onomat from the hand. Stay focused, Yuma. Focus, Yuma. In the battle phase, we go. Let's battle. Take this. My he gave up his Gaga head to play Rhino Bus. And the Rhino Bus was easily dealt with with a Bouncer plus a Forbidden Lance. Rip the Gaga coat. Only two cards in the hand after drawing. This is it. Whatever play he makes, the Bouncer will be able to negate. Yeah, buddy. Zuba coat is going to special summon the Onomatopoeia and the uh, Bouncer is going to stare at the coat menacingly as he then now decides to negate. Negate the coat by detaching a coat. Burn for 500. Battle phase. He's at 3,200 life. He's not losing yet. He's still in this. Goodbye, Onomatopoeia. Wow, not being able to deal with the Bouncer is what costed him. He Book of Moon Bouncer then could not deal with it. That was devastating. On, I'm on a play, returning a card back in the deck to grab a Zuba coat. With my coat, I could summon the Onomatopoeia, a play that Jetski just attempted to do, but was negated by the Bouncer. Set from the hand. Looks like we're about to go to the battle phase with this. Bouncer coat in Onomatopoeia versus a coat with no back row. Does he have a hand trap? Is this it? Takes 900 over the coat with the Bouncer. 1,500 to the face with the Onomatopoeia. 1,800 for the final lethal attack. Lethal. And there you have it. The final time we will play with our sister. This was the final event of Zexel. That's it. No more sister. It is not sharp. Please refer to me saying all this if we continue to play with our sister after Dark 5 comes out. All right, let's go. Thank you. 